Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's Tech Talk. Uh, for this session, we have Ken Fogel, who's gonna be taking you through his presentation. And if you have any questions at any point, feel free to ask them in the chat bar on the side or in the ask a question bar at the bottom, and he'll get to them toward the end of his session. Go ahead, Ken. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. My name is Ken Fogel. I'm a computer science instructor at Dawson College in Montreal. I also teach evening courses at Concordia University, and I've been a blogger. I've had the opportunity to speak at a number of conferences, Java Champion, uh, basically amassing letters, and that little block at the end of my emails is getting bigger and bigger with little pictures. But I'm also very interested in education and sharing what I do. So I decided after years of encouraging students to be involved with open source, I thought it was about time that I finally submitted uh, my first pull request. Give me a moment here and there we go. So my first pull request. Simple piece of code, but it was an adventure. And I'm hoping that some of you who follow this will be inspired to do a pull request or learn a little bit about what's involved. So this isn't the first time I've been sharing code. I have, over the years, amassed a lot of sample uh, pieces of code for my courses. I've been on GitLab since 2014. And even before that, at the college, we had a local subversion repository where I kept a lot of my code. Now, if you go to my GitLab account, uh, you might be impressed to see that I have, what does it say here, 890 examples. The reality is really only 200 are mine. I also ask all my students to make me a maintainer of their code so I have complete access. And so that kind of pumps up the volume, uh, impresses people, but it's really not all that much. Now, I teach in the final year of our program. It is a three-year program. And uh, my job is to lead the students through project courses. In the fall, we do a project course that's desktop-based using JavaFX. And in the winter, it's a web-based course. The students working in teams develop an e-commerce platform. They have to develop a client-facing side and a management-facing side. Uh, if anyone, by the way, is interested in seeing the specs for these assignments, I'm more than happy to share them. Now, one of the things about our program at Dawson, and I've been working, you know, teaching Java at least for, for 20 years, uh, and, and C, C++ before that, is that my concern is not just to show them technique, not just to talk about, okay, this is how uh, a stream works or a Lambda works, or you know this particular technique in coding for a, a servlet. Instead, it's about coding professionally. In the Montreal area, we tell our prospective employers that our students are going to be job ready. This means that when they you know get that first job, they're ready to be part of a team. They're ready to contribute, and they understand how a professional software development organization works. So in my sample code, it's frequently not just about, oh, this is how uh, a particular concept works, but I'm also trying to show how you would likely want to code it in the workplace. In other words, I'm very much concerned with design or best design practices. Now, my code doesn't always live up to that, so let me warn you. It's constantly evolving and getting better year after year. But what I'm most proud of is when our students go out into the workplace, not only do they know how to you know, solve a problem, but they know how to code professionally. Now, being involved in a number of organizations, I realized that I was in a position where I could start contributing some of my code to the community, rather than just having it sit in my little GitLab repository that, well, my students know about it, but no one else, that I would uh, look around to see if there was somewhere else I could take this code, uh, clean it up a bit, make it even more professional, and support it. 
And that's what led me to the Eclipse Foundation, right? It's the home of Jakarta EE. And I figured this would be an ideal place to put my code. I'm retiring in another year, so I need some place to leave, you know, something behind that, well, someone might find useful. So off I went to the Eclipse Foundation and took a look at all of the ee for j or Jakarta projects. And boy, are there a lot of them, right? It's not just the servlet. There are many different projects here. Now, one of the things I recognized is I was not going to be the developer who was going to find uh, the solution to a problem in Java authentication. Uh, I don't even have a clue what Eclipse Soteria is. I, I must remember to look it up after this presentation. But there were two projects in this list that I thought I might be, or my code might be useful for. And they were the Eclipse Starter for Jakarta EE and examples for Jakarta EE. In looking at them, I decided that examples was probably where I needed to start, where I could, you know, submit something very basic and learn the ropes about submitting to an open source project here at the Eclipse Foundation. So first thing I did was go off and verify my Eclipse membership. I joined sometime in the past, so there was some updating to do, some uh, minor pieces of paperwork. One thing I did learn that was important was that the email address I used at the Eclipse Foundation had to be the same as the email address that was associated with my GitHub repository. That was a simple thing to do, and I was all set to go. So time to visit the Jakarta EE examples page. I saw its background. Um, this is a slide. If I slid down, I could see some of the people involved. And I didn't quite understand what it meant by incubation, but whatever. It obviously means something, and it's something I'll have to learn about. I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to find how to join the mailing list. I knew that was the first thing I had to do. So didn't see anything here for mailing list. So I clicked down here on examples for Jakarta EE, which seemed a little strange because I thought that's where I was. But when I did, I found this page. This page might be a clue as to why the examples are just uh, an incubating project. After, well, you can see it looks like two submissions back in July 2019 and August, not much has happened. And the submissions you see there, and there appears to be three between April and May, uh, are just the result of one uh, other individual submitting something twice to resolve an issue and my final submission in May that I'll continue to talk about. Okay, looks good. I'm not going to have a lot of competition. Time to join the mailing list. So then I started looking for the link for the mailing list. Uh, there was no link for the mailing list. So I did what anybody does. I started clicking on everything. Uh, there was downloads, there's who's involved, there's developer resources, governance, contact us, which I usually think is an email that where you're supposed to send complaints, but that was the magic spot. I hit contact us and I finally got to the mailing list. When I first arrived here, there were just 30 odd subscribers. Uh, I've tweeted a lot about my adventure, and that seems to have inspired some people, along with uh, another contributor uh, inspiring his friends. So the list is up to 46, and so that's cool. So I logged in, became accepted into the mailing list, and sent off my letter of introduction. Cool. With that in place, it was time to decide on what particular project I was going to use. Well, first, let's take a look at the project on GitHub. Here we can see the range of projects. And here's the traditional view of it. But if we jump to the README, which is a little nicer, here we see a nice menu structure. 
Each of these represent a particular category of basic examples, from bean validation all the way down to web socket examples. I was interested in servlet examples. I had decided that some code that I had that was, you know, that explained to my students the basics of a servlet could be ideal. So it was going to be necessary for me to see what examples were there already and see if I'd be duplicating what was shown or if I could add to what was there. When I clicked on servlet, I came to another menu in the or I came to its README. And here I could see that there were, well, initially there were just seven examples. The eighth one was the one I contributed and was finally accepted. And I was interested in the one called the web servlet example. Oops. Back up a bit here. There we go. So let's move to my IDE and get a sense of what's happening here. I'm just going to switch to another tab. There we go. So I went off and I downloaded, I cloned the original, that's why I call it original, the original version. Now, a couple things that were important. One, I had to make sure that the example was going to run under Java 1.8 or Java 8. Uh, I run this particular ID under Java 14 uh, because that's what I'm using in a desktop course I'm giving right now. But luckily, this particular tool is more than happy to, you know, manage and deal with code that has to be in 1.8. So I downloaded it. It's time to take a look at the individual projects. But the first thing I always look at is the palm file. So let's pop it open. And here's a POM file. The organization of this project is, is actually quite unique. Uh, instead of there being uh, dozens of small projects, each with their own repository, using the Maven module system, you have a single clone package that contains, uh, there were, I believe, 113 examples, all in a single clone. Now, when I opened up the Palm, I was confronted with uh, what surprised me, which was an error. If you take a look at this little piece of the Palm file, I don't know if you can spot the error, and it has nothing to do with what falls, fell off the edge of the screen. It turned out there's an extra chevron here. I discovered that's the classy word. It's classier than angle bracket. There's a chevron here, one too many. Now, my IDE didn't declare this an error until I tried to compile the code. Okay, that was an easy one to spot. I took care of it. But then I was confronted with a second error. And this particular error, uh, and I, I want to be upfront, had to do with NetBeans. Now, just a word about NetBeans, it seems strange here I am at the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, I use NetBeans in my teaching. I find that of all the IDEs, this is the one that requires the least technical support from me. However, and, and this is a principle of anything that's submitted, everything is IDE agnostic. As someone who uses either Maven or Gradle, the decision as to which IDE you use isn't significant. Individuals choose an IDE they perceive as giving them an advantage, making their life easier. And so that's what's important. The fact that I happen to be using NetBeans here isn't significant to uh, my success in pull requests or my failures. Those are all going to be my fault. But I did want to point out that I did confront a small problem with NetBeans, and it may occur in other environments. Notice this dependency here doesn't have a version. Neither did the one before. They're the only two that didn't. And they didn't have a version because they expected to receive that information from another dependency. 
problem was when I loaded up this project the very first time, none of these jar files were in my local repository. So the version of NetBeans I was using at the time complained. I, of course, panicked and stuffed in a version number just to keep the IDE happy and successfully compiled my code. However, further tests and using a more recent version, and <clears throat> NetBeans 12 just came out, I discovered that NetBeans like, and I already know that both Eclipse and IntelliJ would not have had this problem. NetBeans no longer does. It now understands how to do a priming build and this disappears without the need to rush in and add something here. Oops. So with that in mind, I decided to choose a particular project or choose some code that I wanted to use. So let's go back to NetBeans. So I had a project that's over here called Basic Servlets 01. And we'll just look at one file in here, what I called my basic servlet. Um, I just want to mention for those of you who also may do presentations, don't forget to increase the font in your editor so that everybody can read it. It's not too bad as we sit close to a screen, but when we get back out there and we're projecting, the people in the back row aren't going to read your code if you're still using, you know, 10 point in your editor. Okay, so this simple program simply demonstrated the different methods that you might wish to override in a servlet. So it was very basic. It's one of the first things my students run. It's, uh, I like to say, I use a technique called excessive commenting, even a little history here. You notice I've mentioned C++. And you go through this, and these are all of the various methods available, even some that you would not normally be able to call, things like put and delete. So I said, you know what? Let's take this one example and enhance it. Turn it into something that could be more useful to anyone arriving at the example saying, okay, I come from language X, Y, or Z. How do I do, uh, how do I talk to an application server? And I would call servlets and call say that I'm talking to them at the lowest possible level. So I turn this into a project I call the learning servlet. We can see it over here. And so that basic servlet 01, I reworked into the learning servlet. Again, if anything, I commented it even more in the belief that someone accessing this could learn more about how servlets work. So using the web servlet, I had a description something that would appear normally in a management console. I purposely gave it a name different from the actual name here, taking advantage of all of the different features. I have a logger. I feel strongly about it. I'm also, I'm going to pop up here, a big fan of Log4j. So that's what I'm using here. That came back to bite me. And then pretty much the same code. The one difference though this time was when we get to my do gets, here we go. I wanted to actually show a proper piece of HTML if someone used the do get or the do post. And to accomplish that, I created a simple method at the very end. I'll jump down to it. Here we go, called create HTML string. I thought it was important and you know you probably have seen this in any books you've read, any websites. Do get or do post are kind of like the main of servlet programming. And not so much because they're the first place that people go to, it's more about putting code where it doesn't belong. To me, do get and do post 
is the manager of the servlet. Whatever comes in, it's the responsibility of do get and do post to call upon other methods, even other objects to do the work. Yet, like so many books that teach programming that spend the first six chapters adding code to main, so many books on servlets add code to do get and do post. So I wanted to demonstrate here was a task. I wanted to return a page. It was going to be a method I called rather than placing this code in each of the do methods.
Hey, Ken, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? There we go. How yeah. long have I been silent? <laughs> I think for a couple of minutes at least. Okay, I don't know so what happened there. I, I'll tell you what happened. I, I switched over to cough. Right. And I turned off the microphone and I thought I turned it back on again. So I'm going to back up a bit. <laughs> All right. I don't think I was that far back. I think I was about here. Oh, well, I will assume. So uh, if you could see my face, I'm really turning red now. Very embarrassing. Uh, uh, don't worry, please, please let me know when you don't hear me and I'm switching slides. No, the problem was that I couldn't toggle on my mic either. So that, that happened. <laughs> oh, well. But, yeah. So let's go back to here and talk about what I was happening. So I was talking about opening the Jakarta EE project for the first time. And in this case, so I should point out, I don't see any messages. So if anybody, uh, if you see anything I should know, let me know uh, over the channel. Okay. So when I loaded things up in NetBeans, I came across two issues. There was this problem here with the Chevron. And this had to be extra Chevron had to be removed. So that was simple. And then I got this strange message dealing with dependencies. The fact that um, there was no version number here. I kind of panicked. I stuck in a version number. Turned out this was just a minor issue with NetBeans and with an older version since resolved. At this point, this project had never been loaded into my repository. And so the dependency, and you can see a reference it to here, to it here, Achillean Universe, never happened. So this complained. More recent versions of NetBeans resolve this. And of course, Eclipse, IntelliJ, they've all dealt with this properly. So having looked at the code, oh, so I should follow back. I've got to kind of rewind here a bit. So I put together the project that I wanted to submit. And I called it the learning servlet. Here it is. It was based on some code I presented in my classes. So here we go. Let's take a look at it. It's a simple servlet. I'll just slide quickly to the top. You know how awkward it is to watch things move. Here we go. So I simply logged all the various methods that one might want to insert code into, uh, the init method, the destroy, and so on. And then when we got down to do get and do post, a description. And here I called a method that would actually produce output. It wasn't enough just to, to see it. I wanted the user to be able to interact with it. And I think I may have mentioned this before, maybe when the sound was on. I'm a big fan of a technique of uh, commenting called excessive commenting. So I use a lot of comments to ensure that anyone looking at my code understands what I'm doing. I also wanted to make a connection to RESTful services because that's a, another major use of the, you know, the, the do methods in servlets. So I had my do get, do post. I also had a do put, a do delete. And then finally down here, my create HTML string. Uh, so again, because I don't know where I stopped, I want to point out that, um, maybe repeating myself, that the do methods frequently in books that explain programming take on the role of main methods in desktop applications. And what I mean by that is many books describe programming by first having you write tons of code in main. And then at some point around chapter six or seven, introduce methods and classes. Clearly that's a, an, you know, a, a, a generalization but it still happens frequently. And when I look at books that talk about basics and servlets, that happens as well. That suddenly the servlet or the do get method is retrieving data, generating code, talking to the database. Again, stuffing everything into that do get or that do post. I look at main the way I look at do get and do post. They're, you know, the manager. They delegate. They get other parts of the program to do any work. You shouldn't be doing any real processing 
in your gets, your posts, or any of the others. So this little method is what generates this cute little HTML. I'm a big fan of using CSS. I think that's critical. I don't think you can write or should write an HTML file that doesn't have CSS. So we can see that here. And there we go. Oh, I was so you know proud of this. I posted it, not as part of or not as a pull request, but I put it up on GitHub. I announced it on the mailing list. And I said, OK, is this something that would be appropriate? And the response I got was, well, great work. And this is from Manfred Mean, one of the committers in the project. He pointed out that, in my example, I was using log4j. And that the, you know, one of the principles, one of the policies was that only Jakarta EE API or J Java SE API had to be used. So I had to use Java util logging. I grumbled a bit. I had to fix my package names. That was fine. I needed to put on a license header. Cool. Everything looked good. There was a little more discussion on the mailing list. And Manford produced another document that was quite useful to guide anyone contributing. Again, dealing with one concept, uh, Java 8, some of the points I've mentioned, IDE agnostic. Of course, if you're using Maven, that's not going to be an issue. Everything has to be buildable out of the box, should be able to build it from the command line. So with these principles in mind, it was time to create my first fork. So pop over. So here I had my fork one. I added my servlet at learning servlet and here's where i discovered a silly mistake i made that at symbol made sense for the web servlet example because it was demonstrating the annotation here i was copying that thinking it was significant well let's just say i removed the at symbol later on i was fond of the use of the letter a though i didn't initially understand why what it meant was if you selected one of these projects to open I've already done that. It appears at the top of the list. So that was kind of cool. And so I reworked my learning servlet with the ideas that were mentioned. So great, good time to make a submission. So I integrated it into my first fork and I did my pull request and I got back some issues, issues that I could have resolved more easily if I bothered to use this tool, the Eclipse ECA validation tool. A little embarrassing that I didn't bother to. This tool examines your pull request to make sure it's in compliance. And you know the two most obvious are, do you have your license headers in the right place? And do you have assigned off by a signature in your commit methods and your commit messages. This line up here is what was expected in each of the commit messages. Unfortunately, well, not only was I not getting this, elsewhere in the commit was this unusual name and email address. This was based on my login on my local computer. So my uh, implementation of Git through my IDE picked these up and went, OK, this is what you're going to be. So I edited this now so that it would be appropriate. I found a nice checkbox in NetBeans that made it generate this line by itself. And great, now it's time to commit again. Well, I had a little problem here. Turns out, because the only thing I changed was this particular component, that's not recognized as a change to the project. And so every time I tried to commit, it told me that there was no file to commit. Well, I managed to resolve that without too much difficulty. 
and make my first commit. With a commit or a pull request that met the technical specifications, I started getting more what I would call technical remarks. For instance, um, remove all the comments from the palm. Remove the comments from the HTML files as it's considered bad practice. Uh, going to have to have a chat about that one. Uh, I had at symbols. I had at Omniprof, and that was my own stupidity. The at symbol, of course, triggers Java docs to do things, and I wasn't using it appropriately. Uh, there was also concern about the name, that calling it the learning servlet uh, main, doesn't really fit the style. Didn't have a problem with that. Suggested explaining HTTP servlet. I said, OK. I was getting a little flustered at this point. And if, for those of you who English isn't your first language, flustered is a polite way of saying I was getting pissed off. I was making every request a change. I did everything that I was asked. But I had to think that the bug in my bonnet was the comments. right? And so I wrote, which, and, and I put it here so that you can see it. I won't read it out loud. It's uh, another English term. It's snarky. It's probably not polite. Uh, I had forgotten an important principle in being involved in an open source project. And that is, I was playing in someone else's sandbox. And I had forgotten that. I had believed that I obviously was in the right. I was the smarter person. And that was, of course, a mistake because I rarely am. So I wrote this. I stand by what I said. I think looking at it now, I could have done this more diplomatically and look at going forward how I can start a discussion on this. So with all of these changes made, on April, oh, excuse me, on May 5th, I got this email. This was from Agent, uh, the, the maintainer, uh, the lead for the, the project. This was quite a process, but let's merge it now. Merge 20 into the master, right? And you see that 20, I think I, there were five or six different versions that kept getting rejected for mistakes I made, for failing to meet the design requirements of the project. Now, what did I learn from all of this? Well, as I said a moment ago, I need to remember that I'm playing in someone else's sandbox, that someone else has set up the particular project, has, and remember, this project is now you know over a year old. I consider it mature. Uh, there are principles that the original committers and maintainers agreed on, and I have a responsibility to respect them. And if I'm unhappy, as I say later on, don't be afraid to push for change, but you know, be respectful, be polite about it. Also, don't get upset when changes are made, right? As I say, accept suggestions and don't confuse your opinion with errors, right? It may not be a mistake that I have all these comments, but the feeling of the group was they're not appropriate in this particular case. I said before, be respectful. There are volunteers who are taking the time to go through your code line for line. Uh, my little code was next to nothing. I try and imagine a situation where there were thousands of lines of code that have to be reviewed. Right? I said this a few times, and, and let me make a blanket apology. Right? I probably fell down on this. And to everyone who commented on my PR and felt that I wasn't responding appropriately or politely, please, I apologize. But I am going to push for change, and that'll be the next thing I work on. So let me end with something I promised. I had talked on Twitter about either doing an interpreted dance or a haiku. Uh, well, my dancing days are over. So ooh, one more thing ooh, before we get to my haiku. Some thanks, Arjun, who's the lead, Manfred, uh, Piotrek, Ed, Jason. These are people who sent me emails, 
who took the time to look at my pull requests. And of course, anybody else, thank you. And there's my haiku. Java wants code. Pull request is how it's done. It's your turn right now. And I think I'll stop. I'll stick with software. Thank you. I'll stop sharing this and let's see if anybody has any questions. Hmm. There we go. Hello. Oh, now I can see all this message. They are all disappear. Oh, that's right. Somebody's pointed out that I have written up about all of these things on, on my blog. Uh, it took me a while to figure out how to get the, the code to work. I was unfamiliar with this module system. So um, I hope you can use that and then my other experiences. I'm trying to look through if there's any questions I can answer directly. Oh, somebody's pointed out here that I uh, <laughs> didn't get the sound on. Boy, that was embarrassing. What have we got back here? Thank you. Anything else I can answer? Or... Nope. So I, I have something here that says, how to select the project for your first pull request. Um, it's all about what you're interested in, what you'd like to do. Um, in this case, I wanted to start small. This was going to be the first time I'd ever done anything like this. And I wanted to make sure that, uh, well, I, I was still teaching. Of course, I'm working in an online environment. I wanted to make sure that uh, it was something I could manage and I could learn from. And that's why I wrote it up. And somebody said, uh, your students must be very happy with you. I hope so. <laughs> okay, I think I'm done. Oh, I see something here. I've never pressed this. Unanswered question. It says, oh, yes, we could not hear you. Did I go back far enough? Someone type and tell me if I went back to the point where I disappeared. Okay, good. So I don't feel too bad. Oh, hi, Arjun. Again, thank you. And uh, again, I still feel bad about some of the things I wrote. So please <laughs> accept my apology. It's been my pleasure. <laughs> So you can all see the messages and you can see what Arjun's are writing to me. But uh, it, it's so easy to forget, you know, and, and this is the, the problem, I think, with, with email, with instant messaging. Uh, it's easy to be indignant when you don't have to look somebody in the eye, when you don't have to realize the effect of your words. And in the current situation, it's something we all have to get better at, at least I do. This looks like I'm going to have to get into the interpretive dance after all. Don't forget to cut out the time that I was uh, uh, neglecting sound. 